First Corinthians 10:31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Oh, oh. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of Amen and good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. It is wonderful that you are all here to join us, however you're joining us. Whether you're sitting at home on your couch or in front of the computer screen, I am so thankful that you have found a way to worship with us this morning. All of your brothers and sisters in Christ, I am so thankful that you're here. So good morning to all of you. Now as we begin our worship, we first do so praying for peace. So let us first light our peace candle this morning. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we pray for peace. We pray for peace in a world of chaos. We pray for peace in a time when we do not have all the answers. We pray for peace in a time when people are afraid. Let your peace spread throughout all the earth. May there be peace on earth, Lord, and may that peace come from you. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. The grassy fields say at your feet, the forest trees they stretch to the heavens, the cloudy skies open up to you, the rolling hills rise and fall in you. The ocean waves, they clap their hands. The water falls, bow down to their knees. 
the glassy sea reflects your rays. The rushing river runs after you. And I see your majesty. And how can it be that you delight in me and all creation sings? Great are you, Lord. You are the God of heaven. Great are you, Lord. You are the King of glory. Great are you, Lord. And I delight in you. Great are you, Lord. The autumn leaves drop at your feet, the winter snow it falls silent. The springtime flowers look up to you, the summer breeze it whispers your name. The shining sun rises up to you. The shooting stars dance around in joy. The glowing moon shines forth your light. The universe moves around your throne. I see your majesty. And how can it be that you delight in me? And all creation sings, great are you, Lord. You are the God of heaven, great are you, Lord. You are the King of glory, great are you, Lord. And I delight in you, great are you, creation sings, great are you, Lord. You are the God of heaven, great are you, Lord. You are the King of glory, great are you, Lord. And I delight in you, great are you, Lord. And now is time for our children's moment. Kids, come and gather around. I hope you're able to find a seat somewhere in front of the TV or the computer screen or wherever you are. I'm so glad that you are with us this morning. Now this morning, I have a video for you, and the video is about Peter. Now we've been watching videos lately since you're not able to be in Sunday school, and I still really want to make sure that you learn your Sunday school lessons. So we're going to watch a video in a moment about someone named Peter. Now I'm sure you've heard about Peter. Peter was an apostle, a disciple of Jesus Christ. Since he was a disciple, that means he was one of Jesus' students. But he wasn't just any disciple. You also may have just heard me call him an apostle. He was an apostle because he went to go and to become one of the biggest leaders of the church, which is how the church grew and the church spread. And all of us for thousands of years have heard about the good news of Jesus Christ. All because the apostle Peter Peter and the others with him told the story about Jesus so that story could be spread from person to person, from community to community, from generation to generation, and we could all hear the good news about Jesus and God's love as well. So first, we are going to watch a video about Peter, and then I'll talk to you about that video in just a moment. As Jesus spoke to his disciples for the last time, 
He explained that he would be taken from them to suffer and die. He warned them that the events about to happen would be so painful and so frightening that they would all run away and leave him to face these horrible things all alone. Peter, who had once claimed that Jesus was the Messiah, argued, Though the rest of them fall away, I will never leave you. But Jesus knew better. The truth is, Jesus said, you will deny me three times before the rooster crows in the morning. Just as Jesus said it would, the night turned to terror as he was taken away. Peter, trying to follow Jesus at a distance, crouched in the shadows to hide near a warm fire. A young girl looked in his direction and asked, Weren't you with Jesus? Peter responded harshly, I don't know what you mean. Peter quickly got up and rushed away. Later that night, another servant girl recognized Peter and announced, This man was indeed with Jesus. Peter denied it and said, I don't know the man. Another person standing nearby insisted, You are one of them. I recognize your accent. Peter, becoming more and more upset, cried out, Let me be cursed if I am lying to you. I do not know who you're talking about. When these words left his mouth, the rooster crowed. Remembering what Jesus had said, Peter began to cry bitter tears of hurt and regret. After the death of Jesus, the disciples were lost and confused about what to do. Peter was tired of sitting around feeling guilty, so he decided to do something he was good at, fishing. Peter told the others of his plan, and some of them decided to join his fishing trip. They fished through the night, but they caught nothing. Early in the morning, exhausted and disappointed, they finally gave up and headed back toward the shore. They rowed toward land, and as the morning light was just appearing, the disciples could barely make out what looked like a man standing on the shore. The mysterious figure called to them, Children, did you catch any fish? Puzzled, they answered the stranger, No. The man then said, Cast the net off the right side of the boat, and then you'll catch something. Shrugging their shoulders, the disciples did as the stranger suggested. The nets filled with so many fish, the men could not pull them all in. One of the disciples recognized who had been talking to them, and he cried out, It's the Lord! Peter was so excited, he jumped out of the boat, diving into the water to reach him. Once all the disciples made it to the shore, Jesus invited them to join him by the fire for a breakfast of fish. They talked and laughed together like they had done so many times before, except now the fellowship was much sweeter. Their hero and master had defeated death, and he was back to share the victory. When they had all finished eating, Jesus turned to Peter and asked him, Do you love me? Peter replied, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus asked again, Do you love me? Peter replied the same, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. When Jesus asked Peter a third time if he loved him, a feeling of sadness washed over Peter. He had failed in his love before when he denied Jesus. What could he say now that would prove any different? But he did love Jesus, so he responded, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus' death on the cross had shown Peter what sacrificial love looked like. Peter knew now that his life was not his own, but that it had been bought with a price. Peter was transformed. Knowing he was ready to love fully, Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep and follow me. Did you like that video? It was very informative, wasn't it? Now, what I want to tell you, maybe some of you understood the whole video, some of you may not have, but what I want you to understand is that Peter had made mistakes. Will you do me a favor and raise your hand if you've ever made a mistake before? 
Yeah, I make a lot of mistakes. We all do. We're human and we're not perfect and we all make mistakes. Peter had made some mistakes and he thought that his mistakes were so big that Jesus was not going to forgive him. He thought that he had messed up so badly that he couldn't be one of the leaders to help to to begin and to grow the church. He didn't think that he was up for the task because he had made some mistakes. But do you know what he learned because of Jesus? Jesus taught him that God loves him and God forgives him and that because of the mistakes that he made and because he learned a good strong lesson he could grow to be the biggest strongest leader of the church Peter made mistakes and then he apologized and then he was forgiven and then God used him to grow the church so when you make mistakes friends I want you to know it's not the end of the world have you ever heard the expression don't cry over spilled milk don't cry just because you've made a mistake we all make mistakes I promise look at your parents right now and ask them if they've ever made a mistake I guarantee that they're going to say yes we all make mistakes it's okay what I want you to know is that God loves you and God forgives you and your parents love you and your parents forgive you and your church loves you and whenever you're making a mistake we will help you to find forgiveness as well but there's no mistake that you cannot be forgiven for we all make mistakes but we all receive forgiveness from God all right so now you can go and you can do your Sunday school activities if you have them or maybe draw a really pretty picture and ask your parents to share with share it online for the rest of us to see but you enjoy the rest of this time i wish i could send you off to sunday school know that your sunday school teachers love you and they miss you and they can't wait to see you again and as you go off to find activities to do all of our church i say to you the peace of christ be with you all And I can hear you say, and also with you. So now, friends, let's greet one another. Make sure that you grab your phone or your computer and you type a nice message to your friends, to your brothers and sisters in Christ who are with us online. Say hello to everyone this morning. Greet each other. Share each other's love. And as we do our morning greetings, I have some special greetings that are here for you as we begin worship. Let's see who wants to say hello this morning. Good morning, Zion. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Good morning, church family. Peace be with you. We miss you. We do miss you. But when we see you sign in during church service and Bible study, we know you're safe and healthy. And that makes us happy. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth, that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song. A song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. But it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. King of endless words. No one could express how much you deserve. Lord, we can pour, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a 
song For a song in itself is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus Our reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, the 21st chapter. We will read the first 19 verses. If you are ready to hear the word of the Lord, will you please say amen? After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Now Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, we will go with you. And they went out and got in the boat. But they caught nothing that night. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach. But the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? And they answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast your net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. And so they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord! And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and he jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. Now when they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish on it, and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. And so Simon Peter went aboard and hauled a net full of fish, uh, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. And Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. And this was now the third time that Jesus had appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Now when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. And a second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. And he said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter felt hurt because he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and will take you where you do not wish to go. Jesus had said this to indicate the death by which Peter would glorify God. And after this, he said to him, follow me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
join in a moment of prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for blessing us so we can join together with our hearts and minds for worship this morning. Now, Lord, teach us something new as we meditate upon your holy word. May we be blessed in a way that can help us to follow Jesus more closely. Bless the words of our mouths and the thoughts of our minds so that all that we do and all that we say can be holy and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. So last week we read about two of the times when Jesus visited his disciples after his death and his resurrection. And then today we read about a third time when Jesus visits his disciples after he is raised from the dead. And this is one of my favorite stories about Jesus visiting his disciples. It's one of my favorites because I truly find it the most interesting because we can learn a lot from this one appearance. In just 19 verses from the Gospel of John, we can learn so very much about Jesus' disciples, about Peter, and about what it means for us as well. And so here's what we need to learn. First, we want to pay attention to as many of the details as we can. That's what we always want to do. So here's what we learn at first. We learn that the disciples go fishing, that seven of the disciples of Jesus go fishing. Why do they go fishing? They go fishing because Peter wanted to go fishing. And so he said, okay, that's it. I'm going to go fishing. I'll, I'll leave early in the morning before it's even officially morning time when it's still dark outside. I'm going to leave so I can go catch a bunch of fish for all of us to eat. And the others decide, of course, that they're going to go with him. And so Peter, without even realizing it, is a natural born leader. And we find this out that Peter didn't even quite realize how great of a leader Leader he was, but he was one of the older disciples. He was one of the wiser disciples. He was the rock on whom Christ has built his church, even if he didn't fully realize it yet. And so all of the disciples, they went off fishing that night, but when the sun starts to rise early in the morning, they're pretty disappointing and disappointed when they realize that they had caught no fish. And then they look off at the seashore, and as they look at the seashore, they, they see a man standing on the seashore. They can't tell who it is. It's too far away, but they see a man standing on the seashore, and the man yells to them, hey, you haven't caught any fish, have you? And they say, no. The man yells, we'll throw your net to the other side. So, you know, it, some of them may have started to think, hmm, this seems a little bit familiar, but they're not saying anything yet. So they go, okay, so they take their net and just put it to the other side of the boat. Doesn't seem to make so much sense, but they did it. And then it's on that moment that they realize that their net is instantly full of fish and they're reeling in this whole huge full net, this net full of a gaggle of fish. And then I love what we learn happens next. Now, I'm going to pause here for just a moment to let you know that in case you don't know already, whenever we read in the Gospel of John that there's a disciple whom Jesus loved, John's always referring to himself because John truly knows what it, what it feels like to be loved by Jesus. So he doesn't ever refer to himself by name, but he refers to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. So John is one of the younger disciples, and he's one of the seven who's there on the boat. And they're reeling in this whole huge gaggle of fish that they had caught after they listened to the man at the shore. And suddenly it was like deja vu, remembering when Jesus had said to some of the other disciples when they were fishermen before they had known Jesus. And he told them to cast a net to the other side, and they did. And then he said, oh, come and I will make you fish for people. Suddenly it's like a deja vu moment and John's one of the first ones to realize and John's like, I know who it is. I know who that is on the shore. That's the Lord. That's the Lord. It is Jesus. John knew that that was Jesus on the shoreline. And then of course we learn that, you know, Peter, he jumps into the water to go make it to Jesus as fast as he could. Of course, Peter, we learn a little bit too much information that Peter had been naked on the boat and so he has to put on some clothes before he jumps into the water. But Peter can't wait to get to the shore to go see Jesus and the others quickly reel and, and all of the fish and then row the boat as quickly as they can to get to the shore to see Jesus as well. 
But what we need to know here is what was going on with Peter. Now, Peter was really overwhelmed with guilt. He was so overwhelmed with guilt. And I think that's the reason that John makes sure to, to tell us this story, to tell us about a third time when Jesus appeared to his disciples so that we can learn about what Peter was going through. Now, Peter was a natural born leader. The others followed him. He was a natural born leader. And yet he was so overwhelmed with guilt. He was overwhelmed with guilt because of that night of the Last Supper when he denied Jesus three times. And he did so after he told Jesus that he would never do that. He told Jesus that he would die before denying Jesus. And yet he denied Jesus three times. And that wasn't it. That wasn't the only reason that Peter had all of this guilt, you know, in the pit of his stomach. He also felt guilty because Jesus had told him and the other disciples at least three times that Jesus was going to die and then he would rise again. Jesus had explained this to the disciples and yet they didn't fully understand. So Peter also had this guilt in his stomach because he didn't fully believe everything that Jesus had taught him. And so, so Peter was struggling with a lot of guilt. But then Jesus appeared to the disciples that morning. And I love how at first Jesus appears to them and it's just this joyful, ecstatic moment. And then Jesus, you know, has the food all ready for them so they can sit and they can eat together and they can be together. But Jesus knows that that guilt is eating Peter up inside. Jesus knows that Peter just can't quite forgive himself. Do you realize, by the way, that it is often, at least I find, I think with a lot of Christians, it is so much easier for us to forgive someone else than it is to forgive ourselves. I wish I could see you like raise your hands. I'm pretty sure most of the hands would be up in the sanctuary. But I think a lot of us know that there are often times when it is a lot easier for, give a, for us to forgive somebody else who has hurt us than it is to forgive ourselves when we feel like we have hurt somebody else. That's what Peter was going through. Peter just couldn't come to forgive himself. He felt so guilty for denying Jesus, for not fully believing everything that Jesus had said was going to happen. He felt so guilty and that guilt weighed like a pit in the bottom of his stomach. One another thing I love about Jesus is look what Jesus does. He pulls Peter aside he takes Peter aside from the other group. We learn that John kind of like follows after, you know, wanting to get all the details. And he's always, John's always kind of like a little sidekick of Peter, always trying to, to find out everything that's going on. Now, I'm sure John didn't get the whole entire conversation, but he got enough to write it down for us. But we learn that Jesus pulls Peter aside from the rest of the group. Jesus pulls Peter aside, Peter who's the natural born leader but can't become the leader yet because that guilt is weighing him down. Jesus pulls Peter aside and says to him three times, Peter, do you love me? Simon Peter, Simon is his name, so is Peter. You know, Peter, do you love me? Jesus says to him three times, do you love me? Each time he tells him something like, well, tend my sheep or, or feed my sheep. And Peter wouldn't have fully understood exactly what it meant. I'm sure that Jesus explained even more that we don't have all of the words to. But the third time that Jesus says to Peter, do you love me? That guilt becomes so evident and that guilt becomes so real because Peter starts to think, you know, he doesn't realize that I love him. He doesn't know that I love him because I'm not worthy of his love right now because I feel so guilty because I denied him. I feel so guilty because I messed up in such a catastrophic way. So Peter is feeling so guilty. And when Jesus asks him for a third time, if Peter loves Jesus, Peter doesn't even know what to say. He's just like, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. But then we don't, I wish we had more details here, but I know that there was more to this conversation, but then something happened between Jesus and Peter and we have some of the words, but what happens is Jesus is able to communicate to Peter that yes, he messed up. Yes, he denied Jesus, but you know what? Because of Peter's mistakes that he had made and because of the lessons that he learned, now that he has forgiven, he is stronger. Now that he is forgiven from Jesus because Jesus lets Peter know that 
that Jesus forgives him fully and completely, now that Peter is forgiven, now that he has learned this lesson, now that he has come out stronger, knowing that he would never want to not to deny Jesus again, with all that he has learned, now Peter is ready to be the rock on whom Jesus will build his church. Now Peter is ready to be the head apostle who's going to help to tend to all of the sheep, all of the followers who will come to believe in Jesus. Peter is ready to be the leader of the church because yes, he messed up, but he learned from his mistakes. He received forgiveness from Jesus and now he is ready to move on stronger than he ever was before, wiser than he ever knew he could be. But what I want us to talk about today, friends, is, is guilt. Because Peter's guilt was real. And yes, thankfully, Jesus pulled him aside and taught him that, yes, he was enough. Yes, he had learned from his mistakes. Yes, he was going to be the leader of the church. You know, Jesus was able to take Peter aside and to teach him that lesson. But if it wasn't for that one-on-one, -on -one, I don't think Peter would have ever forgiven himself because guilt is a terrible thing sometimes. And I think us Christians, a lot of times too, we are so good at forgiving others, but we are so bad at forgiving ourselves, even though we deserve forgiveness too. We deserve forgiveness as well. But guilt can be such a terrible thing. Now, I think that guilt is something that we're also really familiar with during this like time of quarantine that we're stuck in. You know, maybe we, well, we're stuck home a lot and maybe we're thinking about a lot of things. Maybe the, the wheels in our brain just keep on turning and maybe we're taking time to feel guilty about things that we've done in our past as we reflect over things that we've done. And maybe that guilt is starting to eat up at us. I mean, guilty, guilt can be such a terrible thing. Or maybe we're at home teaching our kids. I know a little bit some, uh, something about that. And maybe we feel guilty when we don't feel like we're the, the best teachers that our children should have. Maybe we feel guilty when we can't teach the new way of math and we have to teach the old way of math. Totally guilty of that. But, uh, you know, maybe we feel guilty over snapping at our kids or snapping at our spouses. Have you ever felt guilty during this time? I mean, we're all stuck inside. Or, or maybe we feel guilty because we're afraid. Well, was I somewhere? Could I have contaminated something or someone? You know, we just have all of this guilt that we feel inside. This time as we're stuck inside, especially when we can't be outdoors because it's been too cold, this week looks better. But, you know, maybe as we're stuck inside too, we're able to think too much and to stew over things. And we find ourselves feeling guilty. I think that we all know a little bit about what Peter felt that day. I think that we all know a little bit about guilt. Now, I will never ever be the kind of pastor who tells you that I've got everything figured out because I'm human too and we all make mistakes. So I want you to, I'm going to use myself as an example here. You know, we've got Peter's example. I'm going to give you another example as well. There are days during this quarantine time where I feel like I'm not exactly the best parent or teacher or spouse that I should be. And there are days when it's like, oh man, I should be doing so much more. I should be doing so much better at this. I, I should be calling more people or doing this too when it comes to being a pastor. Pastor, there are days I know, and I don't want any sympathy where I know we're all going through this together. I want to use myself as an example. There are days when I feel guilty. Do you feel guilty ever? <laughs> I don't think I'm in this alone, but I want to tell you what I do on these days when I feel guilty. These days when I'm stuck inside and that guilt starts to rise. On these days when I feel like I'm not doing enough or where I'm not enough and I feel guilty, that night I go to bed and I pray to God and I say, God, I didn't do a good enough job today. God, I need your help to be better. God, I need your forgiveness and I need your strength so that I can do a better job tomorrow. And you know what? Whenever I turn to God and I confess whatever mistakes I've made, because we all make mistakes, whenever I turn to God and I lift up those confessions and then I ask for God's strength to do better the next day and I wake up the next day and you know what? The next day I do better because God forgives and God gives us strength. 
So I don't know what anybody might be feeling guilty over right now, but I know that there's a lot of people whose, whose wheels and their head just keep on turning and they're starting to feel guilty about things, whether it's things that are going on right now or things that have happened in the past. Friends, if you are someone who feels guilt during this time of quality of, of quarantine, what I want you to know is that God loves you and God forgives you and you are exactly who God wants you to be. God loves you and God forgives you and God will give you the strength to get through another day, to be a better version of yourself tomorrow and, and then the next day to get better each day. And on those days when you slip and you slide and you fall back, God is right there with you to give you the strength to forgive you again and to give you strength to be an even better version of yourself the next day. What I think we all need to know as we're stuck inside in these days is that God loves us and God forgives us. Whenever you feel that pit of guilt, what I want you to imagine God doing is I, I want you to imagine Jesus pulling you aside the way that Jesus pulled Peter aside. I want you to imagine Jesus saying, do you love me? And you saying, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. You know everything. And I want you to receive that forgiveness that comes from Jesus, to receive that forgiveness and that lesson and that strength and to use that strength to get through the next day. Take it one day at a time and get all of your strength and your forgiveness from Jesus. Now there's this beautiful video done by the skit guys. I know I've showed you guys this before and I actually put the link in for Bible study this week as we went over this reading. But I want all of you to see it because it's a story about grace. It's a story about what we just talked about and it's all about God's grace. And it's a lesson that we all need to know. So let's watch this video now. Grace is God's unmerited favor for us, his crazy love. And the truth is, many times we struggle understanding it. If you find yourself struggling to understand God's grace, don't beat yourself up. Even the disciples struggled with understanding grace. Jesus, is that you? You're alive, I can't believe you're alive. Okay, I was in the boat and I wasn't catching any fish, okay? But I heard this voice and the voice said, cast your net to the other side. And so I'm thinking, I'm a fisherman, I know what I'm doing, but I'm not catching any fish, you know? And so I throw that net over there and then a gaggle of fish pop into that net and I'm going, this is a total miracle. Who could have done that? I need to know who told me to throw the net to the other side. And boom, I look up and I mean, there is you. You're looking at me on the seashore going, it is I, the Lord, and you're alive. I can't believe you're alive. <laughs> this is awesome. Andrew, get out of the boat, come on. Peter, yeah. do you love me? Yes, I love you. I love you. You're alive. This is so great. Good, and, then feed my sheep. Andrew, get out of the boat. Come on, man. It's him. Peter, Yeah. do you love me? I love you, yes. And I'm so sorry about that rooster cluck, and I had no idea what that meant, but I do not. I'm better for it, all right? Okay. Good, then feed my sheep. Andrew, I'm smiling, but I'm serious. Come on, get out of the boat. It's him. Peter, Yeah. do you love me? Jesus, mere words cannot describe the passion that I have for you. I love you. You know everything. I love you. Good. Good. Then feed my sheep. I didn't even know you had livestock. That is so like you, though. There's something new about you all the time. That's what I love about you. Peter, yeah. do you remember uh, the morning the ladies went to the tomb? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're all in the upper room trying to figure out what to do next, you know, because we thought you were dead. You know, you were dead, you know, and we're trying to figure all that out, you know. And Mary comes running up, and Mary's like saying, beehive, beehive, beehive. And I'm thinking, I'm allergic to bees. Like, keep them out. You know what I'm saying? But as she kept getting closer, I heard her correctly. She was saying, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. And we're going, who's alive, who's alive? And she said, she was at the tomb, and the tomb was empty. And she said that the, there was an angel there. And the angel said, go tell the disciples and Peter that everything is okay, he is risen. And so me and John, we hightailed it down there. And if John says he beat me, he's totally lying, all right? I beat him, FYI, all right, you know? And we get down there and I'm looking in that tomb and it is, it is empty. There's nothing in there, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, what does this mean? What does this mean? And John is right there. John is so good with words. He should write a book. He is so good with words. And John said, don't you get it, Peter? This is everything Jesus said he was going to do, and you did it, and it's done. Let's go. This is so great. Wait, yeah. the angel said what? Uh, go tell the disciples and Peter that everything is okay. He is risen. You've risen. Let's go. This he is said what? Go tell the disciples and Peter.
go tell the disciples and Peter. You said my name. Why did you say my name? Peter, that's grace. No, no, I don't, I don't deserve that because that night people kept coming up to me asking me if I belonged to you, if I was with you, and I kept denying you left and right, all right? No, no it'll take me my whole life to make up for what I did. It was unforgivable for no, what I did. No, What I did on the cross was meant to take what is unforgivable and make it forgivable. That's my grace. It's not about you. It's always about me. That's grace, Peter. God's grace is amazing. We all mess up. We all feel guilty. But we're human. What we need to know, friends, is that God loves us. God forgives us. We are enough. God loves us and God forgives us. God loves you. And God forgives you. You are enough. God's grace is enough. You will get through this time. God is with you. God loves you. God forgives you. God gives you strength. And together, but separately, because of God's grace and God's strength, we will get through this together. So friends, hold on to your faith. Know that you are forgiven. Know that you are loved. And know that God's grace, God's forgiveness, God's love is enough for you today. And let's join in a moment of prayer. God, let us feel your love this morning. Let us feel your forgiveness. As we make our way through this time, Forgive us and give us your strength. We ask for your grace and your mercy on this day and every day. Bless us with your strength and your love. And together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving i'll be a living sanctuary for you amen and now is the time for our offerings if you are able we appreciate it if you are only if you are able we do appreciate it if you go online and give at zionucton.com or text to give or write your envelope and put it in the mail. If you are not able, if you are unable to give at this time because you are currently unemployed, please do not even worry about it. Only let your hearts be blessed by worship. Giving is for those right now who are financially able. If you are not able to give because you are currently unemployed, and if you are worried about where your next grocery store trip is going to come from, please do not hesitate to call me to ask for help. We, as your church, are here for you. And now is the time for our offerings. And let us pray together. Gracious God, may this act of giving transform our hearts and our minds. May you bless these gifts and use them to do your will. Through Christ we pray. Amen. You 
you rescued me and picked me up a living hope of grace revealed a life transformed in righteousness oh lord you have rescued me forgiving me you heal my heart and set me free from sin and death you brought me life you've made me whole oh lord you have rescued me and you loved me before i knew you and you knew me for all time i've been created in your image O oh lord you bought me and you sought me your blood poured out for me a new creation in your image O oh lord you rescued me you rescued me you rescued me and picked me up a living hope of grace revealed, a life transformed in righteousness. So, oh Lord, you have rescued me, forgiving me. You healed my heart and set me free from sin and death. You brought me life, you've made me whole. Oh, Lord, you have rescued me. You loved me before I knew you, and you knew me for all time. I've been created in your image, O oh Lord. And you bought me, and you sought me, your blood poured out for me. A new creation in your image, O oh Lord rescued me you rescued me you rescued me you rescued me now friends go be blessed Know that you are loved, know that you are forgiven, and may God be with you this week and every week. God bless you and keep you safe. Amen.